Hello everyone and welcome to the latest instalment of the Confex Q&A with me, Jack Newey, the Event Director of International Confex. I'm joined today by Orla from My Clear Text. Uh, hello Orla, nice to see you today. Hi, nice to see you too, Jack. Right, let's get cracking. Firstly, give me an overview of who you are um, and what My Clear Text do. So my name is Orla Pearson. Um, I am the director of My Clear Text, and it's a company that's been running for 10 years and we provide live captioning for um, deaf, hard of hearing people and everyone who uses um, live captioning as a, a way of engaging with content. And we do that with individuals who are deaf or hard of hearing, but we also provide it for events, mostly for events and for any kind of large event that's going on. Right, excellent. So talk to me about yourself, what, your journey, how did you get into events, what led you to here and, and how you started the company? Well, I was starting my career as a captioner, so um, a stenographer, so I can type that over um, 250 words per minute um, accurately at 99%. So um, that was my job and I worked in the courts for a very long time um, mm -hmm. and I didn't like it. So I phoned up the BBC oh, one day and said, hey, you're looking for people who can do captioning for television. They said, by chance we are. Um, so it was very... Um, lucky for me but I spent 10 years there and it was a really great career move for me so they took me to the states retrained me and I started providing live captioning for broadcast programs on the BBC and um, that could have been anything from Blue Peter to main news um my career spanned 10 years there 15 years there actually god I'm taking five off myself um about 15 years and I was a producer assistant producer there so we were covering massive things like the twin towers going down 9/11 princess diana's death I got a phone call in the morning to come in and caption we captioned wow. 24 hours on elections you know I was involved in the kind of um developing of children's live captioning sports live captioning it was really the birth of live captioning in the UK it wasn't something that was done and from then on all the other channels picked it up so then I yeah. decided that was enough for me of TV and wanted to get back to face-to-face um, -face provision. So I went out and worked freelance for a couple of years and I really saw a very disparate market for captioning. You know, there was great captioners here. There was companies who were doing sign language providing captioning. And I could just see that there needed to be a company that was a really professional deliverer of live captioning mm -hmm. services because the production companies were looking for knowledge and they didn't have it and no one yeah. else seemed to have it. So I really love tech so i got really up with the tech and um 10 years ago we started my clear text and um that's what we do we provide a really professional live captioning service we take you from the from the first inquiry which is usually i need this but i don't know what it is or what to do yeah. and we take you through that journey so that that's really my career path and i've become so passionate about access i do a lot of talking now about accessibility i've created yeah. workshops for accessibility for production companies that kind of thing so just really moving moving into that kind of wanting to see change piece. Yeah, well, I bet you have some funny stories or, or at least interesting stories from the courtroom days, but we won't go into that today. Yeah, let's um, not. <laughs> so <laughs> so um, talk me through what makes my clear text different. You mentioned there's other providers out there or people doing um, other solutions particularly, but what is it about my clear text that, that stands you out? I think because of my, you know, my my co-director and my partner in crime, Elaine McCarthy, she worked at BBC as well. So we have a huge yeah. experience of that kind of what good looks like, what excellent looks like. You know, the BBC is about excellence and that whole professionalism. We're also a really highly technical company. So we made it our business to understand the tech behind the audiovisual provision yeah. within events so that when people come to us, we know what they're using and we're able to respond and say, you can have this option, this option and this option. We also have huge knowledge around the market that people are trying to reach. So we're able to walk them through that and, and open their eyes to the fact that what they think they're providing for one or two people is actually useful for most of the audience. And that goes for most adjustments around accessibility. Whatever you do, it's useful for everybody else. And um, mm -hmm. we don't put our, our work out to market. We have a closed group of captioners that we've vetted and looked at and they, they're at the same standard. Our motto is everyone should look like it's one captioner the whole way through whoever you have and um, yeah. so we we choose the captioner for their experience their skills and we we match them to jobs and most companies just throw it out to the market and whoever comes back and whoever's free we take a real right. interest in high quality 
yeah. yeah. And, you know, we, we, we're there not to sell. We're there to, to push access, really. You know, obviously selling yeah. is a byproduct and good for the company, but really yeah, that's always so. been our ethos and our values. Yeah, so it's, it's quite a tailored approach to it rather than anything just uh, broad, yeah. brush, which is great. Excellent. And you touched on access there. And um, how important is that? I mean, we're, we're all seeing it. It's, it's talked about a lot through our media as well. And um, it's becoming so clear. So talk me through why it's important and also some of the barriers that um, some delegates might face when attending an event. Well, you know, this is a huge topic of conversation. Yes. We, we don't have loads of time all, today. All day. Yeah, we yeah. do. <laughs> I think yeah. it's really interesting to hear more. I can see a change in the last couple mm. of years. I can see that push, but um, it's still slow to come. And it's it's quite disappointing. I've watched sustainability, which didn't exist five years ago. And now we have sustainability awards. We have sustainability stages. I, I really want to see something like that around access. You know, accessibility mm. awards, the most accessible event, the most accessible yep. production company. That's what I'd like to see. But really, um, what people need to realise is that they don't need to attract this audience. This audience is already coming. Most mm -hmm. disabilities are hidden. And most people, you know, events are not a safe place to, dis to declare your disability. So people put a question up and say, hey, you know, let's know if you need any adjustments. You know, it's quite a medical question. They don't know you and you're asking yeah. them to divulge quite personal information about their life at what could be a work event. So I think, um, you know, event organisers, everyone needs to accept one in four people have some form of disability and not all of them need adjustments, but some do. But they're coming to your events. They're coming anyway. And you're not you're charging them same money and you're not providing for them. So it's not about attracting an audience. It's about providing um, a safe space to declare what you need, first of all, by asking questions in a different way. And actually standardising some access at events would be really useful. Anyone with the need then will look and say, oh, OK, this is a safe place for me. We yeah. haven't been a safe place for people to declare. And that's one thing I'd like to see, some standardisation of basic things like how do I get to your venue? Is your venue accessible? If not, what can I do? You know, to give mm -hmm. people a heads up. Yeah. Simple signage, you know, agendas that are clear, registrations that are simple. If I have a mobility problem and I have to click 50 times just to register your event, I'm not going to do it or I'm going to have to ask someone to help me, which is disempowering me. Screen readers having to go through layers and layers of um, choices because you want to get information about your person. You should have a fast track registration. Simple things like yeah. this starting there right through to clutter free spaces, making our signage simple, making um, sure that all the accessible toilets are there in our venues, not booking venues that are not accessible and mm -hmm. getting them to change in that way. Live captioning, sign language on request, a quiet room. And all of mm -hmm. these things are benefiting everyone. A clutter free space benefits everybody. Live captioning benefits so many different audiences. People are neurodiverse, yeah. deaf people, older people with age related and hearing loss. Our global audience who have English as a second language, it's not one or two people anymore. You know, Netflix mm -hmm. had a study, 62 people watch content on Netflix with the captions on all the time. Wow. So, wow. you know, this is here and the events industry needs to embrace it and, and run with it like we did with sustainability. Yeah, wow, that's quite an amazing stat. I'm actually one of those people as well. I just find exactly. it easier to, to focus in. So that's really interesting. And um, we touched on a lot of what my next question was going to be there. I, I was going to uh, get into what uh, organisers might be overlooking when they're running their events. Um, but so if there's any other things you can think of, that'd be great. And, and mainly, what can be done to change this? What are some easy things that event organisers that are going to be attending Convex and might want to a seek you out and, and have a chat with you face to face? But what are some sort of easy ways they can start to change their own narrative and, and help their delegates? I think it's that acceptance that these people are coming to the yeah. to to their events and they're not being served well. So that's a really good place to start. So. Putting yourself in the position of another person. If I had, if I was in a wheelchair, could I navigate this space? Can I get mm -hmm. to your event? And it's okay, you know, you have your event where you have it. But if it isn't on an accessible route, then get someone to take the time to plot one for someone and make that yeah. available. How simple is that? Now you've made sure. And also you're showing people that you're thinking about them. And I think that's half the battle. Asking questions like, we are providing this, this and this. What else can we do to make this a more inclusive and engaging experience for you? That's mm -hmm. much a much better way of asking the question, do you need any adjustments? 
but it's a, it's a more open and um, empathetic way of asking it. And you'll probably get a lot more answers and probably from people who don't see themselves as having disabilities. Well, I find it useful if you did this, you know, mm -hmm. so you're getting information about the people who are coming to you and things. I think live captioning should be standardized mm -hmm. purely because it hits so many audiences. It's the most yeah. requested adjustment anyway. So um, I think that's something that we should be standardized. I think, um, you know, we should have quiet rooms in every space. Mm -hmm. We should have cluster free walkways. None of these are huge money compared to the other things that people are doing at events. My biggest tip is get a budget and get a good one. Yeah. Um, and, and, you know, get some information. We didn't know about sustainability five years ago. Now everyone's an expert. It's the same with accessibility. Get the mm -hmm. information out there. We run, we run workshops specifically for event organisers and production companies to help them just start that journey of knowledge and, and understanding what they're trying to do and how they need to do it. So there is lots and lots of organisations like um, the Valuable 500, which a lot of these um, big companies are members of, the Business Disability mm -hmm. Forum. They all provide lots and lots of information, policies, guidance. So... And there's companies like Attendable who are at Complex. They yeah. they will organise or consult um, on accessible events, running accessible events. So it's out there and it's just about yeah. making that effort and making a decision and committing to it. Great. So a lot of uh, knowledge that needs to be gained, I think, by organisers and a dedicated accessibility budget as a yeah. standardised thing to, to focus. Great. And um, so Confex, a uh, couple more questions. What, what are you going to be doing at Confex? You're going to be exhibiting and sponsoring, which is great, and also some captioning. Talk me through um, what you've got going on at the event. Yeah, we're going to be there. Um, come and visit us. We're on um, ETL 40 for a start. Um, we're also sponsoring the captioning on all four stages, and we are the sponsor for the People and Culture stage. So I'm going to be doing a couple of... Um, talks, one around our workshops and then one about general accessibility and how, how we can really move forward in the events industry. So yeah, I'm really excited. Mm -hmm. I really enjoyed it last year. I found it really, really right. fantastic conference and we got a lot out of it as a company. Excellent. Well, thanks for spending time with me today, Ola. Where can people find chat. you and find out some more information if they want to get in touch? Brilliant. Um, they can go to our website, which is mycleartext.com. Um, um, very simple. And um, they can, there's a web, uh, an email there they can contact us on. We're on social, all the social sites as well. And I'm on LinkedIn, as is the company. So yeah, come and, come and chat, send an email, drop me a message. Always happy to help. Brilliant. Thank you, Ola. Lovely speaking with you. Thank you.